Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and welcome to another episode of Days of Night. In this episode, I've got something pretty special. It is considered one of the defining cameras of the 20th century, the Nikon F. And before I load it with film and head on out, I want to tell you about a few things I've learned about this amazing camera. First and foremost, this is Nikon's first SLR, and it was almost considered a Leica killer. It was sold between 1959 and 1973. That is 14 years. There are very few cameras and possibly zero today that can make that claim. Just like the much coveted Pentax K1000, this camera is 100% mechanical. Not only that, but these cameras were assembled by hand. This camera was an entire system. You could put in a motor drive, you could put in a waist level finder, even multiple focusing screens. The Nikon F was also heavily used during the Vietnam War as well as by NASA astronauts. That is insane. I'd just like to take a moment to thank Dave from the Film Experience Camera Store in Longview, Alberta. Dave loaned me this Nikon as well as a 28mm, a 50mm, a 105mm, and a 200mm lens. If you're ever in southern Alberta, be sure and check his store out. It's worth the drive. This is not a sponsorship, just a whole lot of gratitude. With no light meter on this camera, I will be using my Sekonic 758DR. So also kind of a sidebar that I want to wedge in here, and I don't know where, but I'm, I'm really excited about it, and I want to share it with you, is that I've been shooting using this bag since about 2008, and it's got holes in it. You might have noticed that I've got... Um, tape around the uh, shoulder strap and the zipper has been broken on here since like year two. I finally took the plunge and I replaced it with another Think Tank bag, the Retrospective 10. That is the Urban Disguise 40. Yeah, this one's the Urban Disguise 40. Finally replaced it with something that I think suits my personality a bit more. And I'm, I'm super excited about a camera bag and I just wanted to share that with you. I think testing out a classic camera requires some classic film. I'll be shooting with Kodak Tri-X 400 today, donated by Chicago Bill. Chicago Bill recently donated 59 rolls of film to the channel and it's super appreciated. Thank you so much, Bill. This is definitely gonna go to good use. Right now I've got the 105 millimeter F2.5, but I'm also gonna be potentially shooting with a 28 millimeter f3.5 as well as this gorgeous 50 millimeter f1.4 but yeah with all that being said nothing to do now but get this camera loaded as simple and as dave put it as elegant as this camera is it is one of those cameras that you want to read the manual to learn how to load and unload and generally operate. So one of the first things you might notice is that it doesn't have a button on the bottom to release the film in order to rewind it at the end. Instead, it has advance and rewind at the top and you wanna make sure it's set to advance. The next thing is, is that you don't pull the top here in order to flip open the back. It opens very much like a Leica where you twist the bottom and then slide the back panel completely off. I was having a bit of trouble there, but you definitely want to make sure that it's on the teeth. There we go. Twist that back on, and I'm good to go. Advance a couple times. I may have wasted a frame or two there getting this thing loaded, but better to be safe than sorry. For today's first impressions, I'm going to be heading out to the neighborhood of Inglewood. Inglewood is Calgary's oldest neighborhood, and 
this year I've been doing a photo project. I hope to make a photo book. And basically the photo book is Inglewood 2020. I may add some old photos, but I've been heavily shooting Inglewood during 2020 um, in order to really saturate myself into one specific area in order to push those creative juices. Now, despite being December, um, it is 12 degrees outside right now. That's Celsius, by the way. And it is incredibly windy as well. So it should make for some interesting photos. Now, the other thing is, is that um, if you're watching this a couple of years in the future, it's still the middle of a pandemic right now. And my province of Alberta is one of the worst hit. If my province was considered a country at the moment and you took the per capita stats, we'd be like fourth worst in the world right now for the number of cases we're getting per day. So I'm going to be avoiding people a lot and I'm still going to be wearing a mask anyway. It is not ideal, that's for sure, but I need to take precautions in order to keep myself safe. So if you're wondering today why I'm shooting a beautiful neighborhood like Inglewood, sort of like in the deep corners and the deep recesses, that's why. But anyway, with all that dreadful nonsense pushed to the side, let's try and have some fun today. Let's get started. There's one thing that I've learned shooting the same neighborhood all year long. It's that it's really hard to get outside of your own head. I end up walking down a lot of the same roads just out of habit. I end up shooting a lot of the same things. And uh, I think that's why it's important. I mean, I do think it's important to come back and reshoot things in different weather at different times of the year in different circumstances different times of day but yeah that has been my biggest challenge so far is how do i get out of my own head and shoot from a unique perspective someone once told me that it's impossible to escape your own style and if that's true then the key is to change your style, I guess. But how do you do that? I do feel like when this project is over that uh, I'll be relieved. I honestly think that I got what I needed out of this. And right now, yeah, you want to... I told myself at the beginning, I told myself at the beginning I was going to do this until I was sick in the head with it and I'm sick in the head with it. I have I feel like I'm super familiar with the area. I've shot outdoors, I've shot indoors. I've shot it during the day, I've shot it at night. I've shot the streets. I've shot the alleyways. Uh, do I find something new each time? Yeah, I do. But the return on investment it's not nearly as high anymore. At some point, you just gotta wrap things up. It's like writing a short story. You know when you wrote short stories in school? You, uh, you kept revising it and revising it, and at some point you just had to put your name on it and hand it in. And I think giving myself a year to do this project was just enough time. Well, I am on shot number 32 now, and I'm starting to head back to the car. Um, it's the middle of December, so the sun is setting at 4.30 in the afternoon, which is just, just ridiculous. Um, one of the challenges of shooting 
at, you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the sun sets at 4.30 is your own shadow getting in the way of your shots. So that's the reason why I use the 105mm for a lot of those wall shots that you're going to see in those... Uh, I shoot walls a lot. I don't know how else to put it. One of the things I tried doing today to be creative and fresh is if I've shot something before, this time I would try and put something in front of it. Putting stuff in the foreground adds dimension to your photo. It adds interest, it gives you an idea of scale. Um, you know, don't just have a subject, have a secondary subject. Make that secondary subject contrast the initial subject if you can somehow. Use it to frame your shot. Ooh, one of my favorite things, a bridge. Gonna get a closer look at that and see if I can get an angle on it. Dave also lent me his 200 millimeter f4. I should have just brought them all. I should have just brought all the lenses with me. All right, back of the car. I did end up finding, honestly, I have no idea if it's gonna work out or not, but an angle underneath the bridge. And it took a few snaps. And then I did realize that I had less than 36 shots. So I advanced one too many times when loading the film, but that happens sometimes. Overall today, I think was a win. Uh, like I said, this project has been, it's felt repetitious. Trying to bust myself out of that has been the biggest challenge. I tell you one thing though, what wasn't a challenge was using that Nikon. That thing felt beautiful in my hands and I wanna talk a bit more about it when I get back. Um, so yeah, the next time you see me, I will be in the dark room. Okay guys, I'm back home now, I'm in the dark room, and I am ready to develop this role. Alright folks, as you can see, I'm doing my final wash. This is the part where I usually say, well, I hope things turn out. Um, I guess I'll explain my concerns, because there's always at least one. Because um, I'm either testing a new film or a new camera. Um, first concern is that uh, this is a camera I haven't tested before. And while I'm fairly confident it works because it's coming from a reputable source, there's always the first roll jitters. Um, second thing is that this is a donated roll from Chicago Bill. And while I don't have any concerns about the source, um, my package was held up at the border. And even a couple of the re-rolled films that he donated had popped open. And a birthday card that was supposed to be in the box was magically missing. So my concern is that they x-rayed the ever-living snot out of my film. And then they went through and they rummaged through it uh, on top of that. That being said, an x-ray isn't a death sentence necessarily. There's more factors than just being x-rayed. How long it was x-rayed. Uh, the speed of the film, uh, that sort of thing, what type of x-ray. Uh, I don't claim to know all the details, but, you know, nonetheless, 
Those are the things that have been in my mind all day while I'm prepping for this. I think I'm at inversion number 16 now, 17, and we'll see how this goes. I had nothing to worry about. Come on. As per usual, nothing to be concerned about. At first glance, these look beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to throw these into the photo flow, then hang them up to dry and see how they scan. No waiting for you, though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. As always, I hope you enjoyed those. One thing I found really interesting is that almost every single shot, except for one, was vertical. And a year ago, that would have not happened. Every shot a year ago would have been horizontal, and there might have been one vertical in the entire roll. It just goes to show that, I mean, as simple as it is, I am branching out. I am breaking out of my style. I am trying different things. I haven't developed with Rodnall in a while, and I haven't shot with Triax in a while either, and I forgot just how curly Triax can get. That reminded me one of the reasons why I switched to Ilford HP5. That and the price. As far as my Inglewood project goes, I probably have one or two gems here that I might add to the book. Maybe one. I do have a lot of photos I have to go through, and I still have yet to organize my film archive and go through all the old rolls of film that contain Ilford shots. That's going to take a while. Even though the book is a 2020 project, the printing of it is a 2021 project. More importantly though, what do I think of the Nikon F? Uh, straight off the bat, and I know it doesn't relate entirely to the camera, the 105mm f2.5 was a pleasure to use. I didn't use the 50 millimeter today, I just used the 28 3.5 and the 105 2.5, and it's a gorgeous lens. I love the 105 millimeter focal length, and this particular lens focused like butter. It was so nice to use. How do you talk about the pros of a camera that is basically the abacus of SLRs, the bare bone basics? Well, I would say one of the things that I liked, interestingly enough, was the back cover. I like the way the back cover fits into place instead of flipping open. I believe, and this is just my opinion, and I'm kind of guessing here, but it feels like there is less of a chance of a light leak situation due to the way it's constructed. 
there's an overlap when you slip it into place and the whole bottom comes off and you're much less likely to get leaks on the bottom because of that. Also the fact that it didn't have a button on the bottom of the camera that you could accidentally press, you're not likely to accidentally switch it from A to R. It's never happened to me, but there is always the chance that you can hit that button on the bottom of a lot of more modern SLR cameras. And because this is a bare bones camera, it's going to feel familiar in your hands. The easiest thing to compare it to is the K1000, though I have to say I think the Nikon F is a much better build. And I am starting to become a Nikon fanboy. I'm really looking forward to reviewing more Nikon cameras. If you're new to the channel, then you might not know this, but my main 35 millimeter camera is a Nikon FE. It is my favorite 35 millimeter camera of all time. And I know this is just a first impressions, but I have to say the Nikon F is probably a pretty close runner up, even though it doesn't have a light meter. The fact that it didn't have a light meter doesn't bother me. The fact that it didn't have a hot shoe doesn't bother me. I don't use a flash and there is a hot shoe accessory that you can attach to the side of it. So if I wanted to put my Reveni Labs light meter on it, for example, I can do that. One thing that I liked even more than the Nikon FE was the advance lever. The advance lever does have a lock on it like the FE, but you don't have to yank it out at like a 45 degree angle. It actually pushes in a little bit and then it's locked. I like it way more than the FE's version, which is you got to snap that bugger out and then press it. So annoying. I've missed so many good shots that way. And I haven't done it yet, but this thing has interchangeable prisms. You can put a waist level finder on it if you want. I think that is really cool. The last time I was able to use a waist level finder on a 35 millimeter camera was, I think, a Miranda Sensomat SE or something like that. And I really like it. If you're doing street photography, it's really subtle. When you're when you're shooting like this, you know, it's like you're, you're pointing at people. But if you're just walking around like this, it's a lot more low key. I like that. But yeah, that's all for now. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I have a PayPal donation box in the description below. You can give $2, you can give $1. You can give whatever you're comfortable with. Every single dollar helps. If you want to sign up for something a little bit more permanent, I have a Patreon page as well. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic.